So you don't want to get up in the middle of the night just so that you can capture some stars with your phone. What if I told you you could take photos like this, all in the middle of the day, and you can catch up on the sleep at night? No worries at all. Let's get into it. G'day guys, Shane Mostert here. If you're into mobile photography, I do two videos every week. One on a Monday, generally, and one on a Friday. With the five minute Fridays, is it ever five minutes? It's hardly ever five minutes. But anyway, subscribe to the channel. I do lots of tutorials on uh, mobile photography, small lens photography, so iPhones, Androids, GoPros, that sort of thing, all about night stuff. So we learn how to shoot the stars at night and do some funky edits with different apps that we have, uh, do light painting, all that sort of stuff. So if you're into that sort of thing, subscribe to the channel and I'll see you each and every week. So I came across on Facebook, there's a, there's a group on Facebook, it's all about iPhone photography. If you're into iPhone photography, go ahead and join that group. It's a pretty, pretty interesting group. Um, lots of people help out, lots of people ask for advice, and generally it's a pretty good, pretty good group to belong to. On there I've seen some photos of people who have put photos of structures and that sort of thing with some really impressive Milky Way um, starry photos in the sky up there behind the subject, and I think, how on earth did you do that? You've got a phone for crying out, it's just not possible. Well, turns out you can, but it's a little bit of trickery, a little bit of black art, and uh, well, I'll show you how to do it. So what we're talking about today is an app, and the app is called Photoshop Camera. This is a, an app that you can use as a camera. Is it as good as a camera? Yeah, it's okay as a camera, it's not great. There's definitely better camera apps out there. But what it does do is it gives you these things that it calls lenses, but in reality, it's actually filters. Whenever I take a photo that I want to use this app with, I'll generally take the photo with the camera app or one of the other apps like Moment app, uh, Halid app. There's, there's so many different apps to take photos with, but the camera app generally works pretty good. I used to think that when you wanted to take photos that you wanted to transform into a night, a night starry sort of photo, you had to take the photo at night. I've spoken about another app in the past and this app was called Skylab and it's an, it's an app that you can replace the sky with. And that's all well and good, but it generally just replaces the sky. What this Photoshop camera can do is you can go ahead and take photos of, say, this, this tree. Now, if you're a regular on this channel, you'll see there, you, you will have recognized this tree. This is a tree that I use for a lot of testing, especially at night, to capture nice starry photos. can stand on my property. This one here is on the neighboring property. It used to be a wonderful big old willow tree and then the previous neighbor they burnt the land out to get rid of weeds and stuff <laughs> and it just killed this tree. It just caught fire and anyway it, it's, it's just destroyed the tree but it makes for a really kick-ass sort of subject for a night photo. And I've tested lots of apps against this tree. Um, Moment app, um, Nightcap app. I've, I've, I've tested so many different apps for the starry skies using this tree so that we've always got a, an even playing ground, if you like, against all the different uh, apps that I review. So, I went out there this morning and I took some photos of this tree. Nothing special, just some morning photos, middle of the day. So I used to think that you had to go out and take photos, because I've done that Skylab uh, review where you replace the sky in different photos, I used to think that to do an effective sort of Milky Way sky replacement, you needed to go out and take the photo at night. This app changes that. You can go out and take a photo in the middle of day, in the middle of a really bright sunny day, and this app is smart enough that it will actually change the appearance of the foreground and the subject to do it pretty well. What I do like to do though, is I'll take the photo with a native app, go into Lightroom, edit it up quickly, and then export it into your camera roll, bring that photo then into Photoshop camera. When you're trying to take a photo of something as complex as a tree, this dead tree here, the app really struggles in the camera, on the app, it really struggles to find the branches and the intricate details of the tree and it tends to cloud them out and fog them out and it doesn't do it really well. What I will do is I'll go and take a photo with the native camera app and then put it into Lightroom, do a quick edit and export it, bring that photo then into the Photoshop camera and use the lenses, they call them lenses, they're just filters, 
to transform that photo. Let's have a quick talk about this app. Is it free? It is, it's absolutely free, but you do need to have an account with Adobe. Does it cost you anything? It costs you nothing. You can sign up for a free account, then log into it, and you can use this app. One of the in-app purchases that you can buy with this is, I believe, like a 20 gig cloud storage, but in reality, use Google Photos, it's free. So once you're into this app, uh, let's, have, let's have a look through some of the, the features on this app. Up in the top left-hand corner, you're going to see um, the other lenses, and these lenses, uh, like I say, they're not lenses as such, they're just filters. So if we go into there, you can see the ones that you already have, and then you can see on the right hand side, you can see the manage filters, and you can go through and you can swap and change those filters to the ones, that, so they're quickly accessible for you if you use them more regularly. To be honest, I think that's just a bit of and just go through them, it's not difficult. It's a pretty easy app to use. You'll see also at the top there, you've got the three dots. That's to change the aspect ratio from four thirds to nine sixteenths, I believe it is. And they're the, one of the, well, the two of the most common uh, aspect ratios for social media. You've also got your flash there. And if you know anything about uh, what I think about flashes, well, <laughs> I'll link up the top here to a thing called Lytra Torches and uh, don't use your flash. The flash on phones are generally crap. You've also got the gear icon there and that's just for preferences and you can go and change all the the back end settings if you like in there but how, how it's set up by default is pretty good. Let's get into the interesting part now if you go down the bottom left hand corner there you've got those little star sort of icon there and that's where all your lenses are. If you go into there each one of these lenses it's a lens kit if you like or a filter kit um, and it comes with four five six uh, different sort of lenses or filters in those kits um, so you can download one of those kits and go through the individual filters and it applies it directly onto your photo for you. You're going to see how it looks and it's actually very smart the way that it does it. So let's open up this tree photo that I took this morning and we're going to bring that straight into the app. I've already edited this in Lightroom. Bring it straight into the app and we're going to apply some different filters here. And this is how easy it is. We're just going to go through these. Some of these come by default in the app and some of them you need to go to um, that lens kits and just download them. Like I say, they're free, so go your hardest. Once you've downloaded those lenses, you can certainly go through and have a look at how each of them affect all of these photos. Now, it doesn't have to be all about starry photos. That's what I'm about, so that's what I've got this app for. But if you're not into that starry photos, there's so many different things that you can do with this. There's food photography, there's art photography. I remember a little while ago, someone was selling artwork on Facebook of just photos that they've taken. They've put them through an app and made them look all kind of cool and funky like this. And they're selling those, those photos as prints and I, I believe they're doing it right. So, go your hardest. But what we're about here is night photography and um, we've got a few different apps here, a few different filters. The ones that I've downloaded already is the, or well, the ones that I have in my tray, if you like, is the Tempest set, the Celestial set, the Interstellar set, and the Night Shift set. Um, I believe the Night Shift one comes in there by default, and it can do things like this. So not only do we have some cool photos that we change there, but we've also got some time-lapse things that it can do as well. So it's kind of cool. Once you set with that, you can see the bars at the top there with the sliders. All they are for is to do any sort of fine tuning that you want to do to the image. Now what I'll say is um, the fine tuning that you do on these images in this app, it's really not worth that much of an effort to go to. It's not that great. Um, I find that Snapseed and Lightroom are far superior when it comes to doing any sort of fine tuning on any sort of image. Bring in the effects through those filters, through the lenses, um, and then export it into your camera roll. You'll see down the bottom there, you hit the arrow, and then you've got the download button down the bottom right hand corner there, and you can save that straight into your camera roll. It's as simple as that. So as you know, the Milky Way season, if you watched the video last week, the Milky Way season only lasts for a certain part of the year and outside of that time, what are you going to do if you really want to take mobile photos uh, with the Milky Way? Well, this is not a bad app to get around that. Is it cheating? Absolutely, it's cheating. <laughs> yeah. 
I can't stress that enough. This is absolutely cheating. Um, but at the end of the day, we're doing things with our mobile phones. You're going to get things that are not nearly as good as doing them with a DSLR or, or a full frame mirrorless camera or a uh, crop sensor camera for that matter. You can put some nice fast lenses on proper cameras, go out there and do some really cool stuff. The dynamic range on those cameras is just sensational when you compare it to any mobile phone, any mobile phone. But you're just not going to get the dynamic range that you do out of something like a uh, Sony A7 or a Canon 5D or Canon 6D and whatever you Nikon guys have. So yes, this is absolutely cheating when it comes to taking this sort of photo. Does it matter? If it matters to you, it matters. At the end of the day, you can take some pretty cool funky photos and uh, that's what matters. All right, see you next week.